Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about dot point four point two of the Blueprint of Life syllabus. It basically basically asks us to outline using a simple model the processes by which DNA controls the production of polypeptides. The production of polypeptides is pretty much protein synthesis, and I'm going to be talking about how that actually happens. I'm just going to outline, which is a pretty low verb, but there's quite a lot to remember. Okay, so mRNA, what does it stand for? mRNA stands for messenger RNA. tRNA, that stands for transport RNA and codons. Then you've got transcription and translation. Now don't worry about this because I'm going to be defining them and going into detail later. But there's something I need to explain before I go into any sort, any sort of detail. You've got DNA, which is deoxyribose nucleic acid, and you've got RNA, which is just the ribose nucleic acid. The main difference is, is that it's missing the deoxy, uh, deoxy, um, deoxy part, and that means that it's only like pretty much half of the DNA molecule. So imagine if you're splitting this in half, that's pretty much it, and that, that half is that RNA, and it's got that half of it's got one half of those um, nitrogen bases. It's the it's the complementary pair kind of thing. So there's two pairs of RNA and they join together and make a DNA kind of thing. Um, not quite, but you should get the point. Anyways, let's move on. So mRNA, it does not have the T nitrogen base. Do you know how there's the um, A, T, and G, C, the the four different types of nitrogen bases possible in DNA? It can't in, in RNA, mRNA, it can't actually have the T nitrogen base, but instead it gets replaced with a U. It's not that important, but it can be useful when answering questions, and sometimes they ask tricky questions, obviously. So, anyways, let's move on. In, in mRNA, it is defined as a type of RNA that co that carries the genetic code from DNA in the nucleus to the ribosome in the cytoplasm. So let's think about this. In the nucleus, we have DNA. And that DNA it unwinds, and when it unwinds, um, this mRNA copies one, like copies the half of the DNA that it needs, and then ends up going to the ribosome in the cytoplasm. So there's the important things that you need to know. mRNA is produced through transcription. Transcription is our first process. So don't get mixed up with the other one, which is translation, because transcription is our first process. And if you think about it logically, transcription is when you write something down and you scribe something down. So in the same way, if you have mRNA, it's scribing down the details of the DNA molecule already present in the, in the nucleus. Perfect. So then the mRNA, it exits through the nuclear pore into the cytoplasm. Now in the cytoplasm, there's there's quite a lot of things, and if you can remember, you might have done it in your prelim course, and you might have revisited it later. But there's something called the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. The mRNA makes its way to the ribosomes. Okay, so let's have a look. There's a process which means that in the DNA, as I explained before, the DNA unwinds, exposing the nitrogen bases. The messenger RNA copies the code through the process of transcription. And remember, RNA means single, so like. If you think about the meme forever alone, just think about RNA as being forever alone. Okay. But it's not actually forever alone, it finds its couple later, and, and that's all good. Anyways, you've got transcription, which I've just said, and if you want the formal definition, it is the process where information from the single DNA strand is copied for, by the mRNA. And that's what we just said here, where the mRNA copies the code through the process of transcription. Just repeating myself so it gets into your head. Okay, let's move on. After transcription has taken place, what actually happens is that the messenger RNA moves from the nucleus and atta attaches itself to a small subunit of ribosome in the cytoplasm. So I'm just repeating myself again, but it's just important you get these steps into your head, because most likely you're going to be tested on it. Okay, so we have the tRNA, and as I said before, tRNA stands for transfer RNA. Now the difference between mRNA and tRNA is that tRNA actually just uh, is in a random location in the cytoplasm, and it's a type of RNA which car carries amino acids to the ribosomes. Okay. So here's a little you know flow diagram. So tRNA bonds to the amino acids in the cytoplasm, random place, and from there the loaded tRNA bonds with the mRNA at the ribosomes. So if you can think about it, it's like an interlocking process where you've got the mRNA on one side, on the one side, and you've got the tRNA on the other side, and they lock together kind of thing. So this is what's going to happen in the process of translation. Perfect. So the formal definition for translation is that it's the process in which polypeptides are assembled on the ribosome using the information on the mRNA molecule. Let's get a little bit clear here. The mRNA is basically telling, basically telling the um, the tRNA what type of 
amino acid uh, needs to be coated next through the nitrogen bases. And through this, it can create a polypeptide chain to create a specific protein. So every DNA molecule, or every RNA molecule, every mRNA molecule, I mean, um, it creates a different type of protein depending on what's actually coded inside it. Cool. Hopefully you get that, and hopefully you get the idea of translation where it uses this mRNA and, it, and the tRNA, it uses these two together and translates what the mRNA wants, this code that the mRNA wants, and it codes it in a specific way, um, the amino acids and everything. So if the mRNA has a specific nitrogen basis, it gets coded to the specific um, nitrogen basis through the tRNA. This will all get clear at the end when I show a little diagram which sums everything up nicely. Okay, so let's move on. So I haven't actually explained what codons are, and uh, I'll just do that really quickly now. Codons mean that they're a set of three bases on DNA or mRNA. So codons, um, they're the three new, um, yeah, they're the three nitrogen bases on either DNA or mRNA. So here's a little diagram. So suppose this was our three. So that's one, that's two, and that's three that's our codon. This entire thing is our codon. So three bases make up one codon. Okay, so polypeptide chain uh, grows in um, in response to codons and uh, all together at the end you've got the completed protein which is either used up by the cell or is packed and exported. Packed or exported actually. Okay, so let's go down to this. Hopefully this makes it a lot clearer for you. So this is how I'm going to explain it. This is our messenger RNA which has been um, which has been transported from the nucleus through the nuclear pore into the cytoplasm. What we're seeing here is the cytoplasm. So this entire thing is a cytoplasm. Okay, cool. So you have the mRNA, you've got the ribosome, which the mRNA attaches to, and then you've got the tRNA. So this is what actually happens. See all these little uh, every three, there are codons. And what actually happens is that the tRNA attaches to these codons and see how it has C, U, and U? That's what it's going to come up with and it's going to come uh, A, A, and G. It's going to attach to this and then specifically based on this it's going to have the the leftover polypeptide, um, the, the leftover amino acids. So like, this is our amino acid and this is connecting to here and it's going to add on to our polypeptide chain. So what happens after the tRNA connects to our messenger RNA is that the uh, polypeptide chain gets bigger and connected, but how the tRNA just goes away. See how in this one, this one used to be connected to TRP here, it used to be connected, but what actually happened is that the tRNA goes away without the amino acid attached to it still, but the amino acid gets attached to the growing polypeptide chain. And this is how our polypeptide chain gets bigger and is coded, coded in a specific way to create a specific enzyme. Okay, so I hope I've summed everything up well, and I hope you do understand. If you don't, then feel free to ask me questions through YouTube or whatever. Thanks for watching.